Hello, this is Daniel and welcome to the sixth part of this character modeling tutorial series. This video will be rather brief, but to give you a quick overview, we will be talking about how to draft the cloths in ZBrush, we will be sculpting the legs, and at the end I'll give you a quick update on the next steps that are to come. So with that out of the way, let's get started. So here we are back then in ZBrush, and today we will be looking first of all at the very first topic, which is uh, drafting the cloths. Now at the very beginning there's as always many steps that I'm going through so let me quickly talk about those first. You can see that one more time I'm going back to my to my block out and I'm just going to choose those parts that are relevant to the piece of cloth that I'm sculpting. I'm making a copy of that area and I am merging those together using a DynaMesh or a similar tool. And now basically from here on out you'll try to create a new layer out of this. Um, this is now separate, a separate subtool or a separate object depending on how you want to think about it and I'm just blending the, the different volumes together. You can see I'm also creating new primitive shapes for the sleeves for example because this is something that doesn't isn't really too much based on the geometry right below and in this way I am making progress you know just just on and on from one piece of cloth to the next. Now while I continue here in the background to, s to work on the cloth, I mean it's just very simple operations really, uh, let me quickly explain what I have been doing in this past week. This, The contents of this video of course are very simple and didn't take me too long, but I was experimenting a lot with the upcoming steps. I went ahead and retopologized the face twice already, I worked on the normal editing and I continue to feel sort of um, sort of a remaining potential. I thought I could still do better and so I'm still experimenting with that. That's why I need a little bit more time and this sort of ended up being <laughs> almost a filler episode. But before I talk too long about that, let me quickly explain what I'm doing in the background. I have now moved on to the skirt and I took a little bit of a different approach to the um, the upper part of the cloth. So what I did is I I went to the subtool panel and I appended or inserted a new cylinder. I then used the C modeler brush to sort of take out the loop cuts and with that very low poly shape I formed the basic you know, outlines or the basic proportions of the of the piece of cloth. It's similar to what I did with the sleeves, by the way. Um, but this time I took that as my base and then I went ahead and sculpted it in some additional details. While I'm working in the background here, I want to clarify one more thing that I think some of you might be asking yourselves. When you really think about it, the sculpt as I'm making it at the, at the moment is not as detailed as you might expect it to be if you really wanted a finished fine character as a sculpt. There should be more detail in this of course and, and really many of the shapes could be more refined. But what I'm really trying to do here is still actually just indicating the, the forms that I want to have. It is very important to not spend too much time on the individual parts in this stage because you may make some mistakes and you can see at the moment actually uh, at a very good timing that I just realized that the head was way too small and imagine you had now a lot of detail you know the perfect perfect neck and everything was was completely decided um, it would be really difficult to sort of then decide all of a sudden that you want to make a rather big change. So sticking to a very low resolution for a very long time um, and really almost drafting for the whole first, you know, for a very long time anyways, it helps you to um, allow yourself to go back and make changes as, as it seems fit. Now this is as far as I'll be sculpting um, in in this part, but actually off camera, um, especially 
in this week coming in this past week I've been re-sculpting the face I've been re-sculpting the hair and I tried a couple of different versions and I've retopologized as I mentioned it before a few different versions and this is again why why I didn't go into too much detail right away but anyways uh, I made a bunch of corrections now to my scalp already as you just saw and right now I decided that as part of this video I would also uh, do the, the legs and this is one thing that I'll be starting right now just very quickly before that you see that I'm organizing the subtools on the right side now that you know we ended up having a bunch of objects I'm beginning to to organize my work a little bit there so that it's easier to navigate now let's get started with the legs the legs turned out to be actually a rather fun part to work on those of you who have watched this this series for the last couple of weeks you may remember that um, I think two weeks ago we talked about dynamic lines and balance and how these sort of dynamic curves are very important particularly for the legs and so I really focused on those lines this time around because this is really now the moment when I will sort of solidify the form of course not to the finest detail but the general shape should not be just, you know, um, some some primitive objects anymore, but more of a smooth, smooth, continuous form. So that's why I'm really going in here with the move brush in particular, pushing things around to really get those curves the way I want them to be. One more little advice that I can give you is that very often it happens that when you begin to now finally look at a closer level of detail that you begin to lose um, you know an overview about the big picture so in my case my legs ended up being uh, too thin and so I had to go in with the inflate brush and inflate them as a whole so those are the things that you might want to look out for and now finally I'm sort of going into the last section of this video uh, in which I'm just giving the skirts some final touches. I added some more strokes to make the folds a bit more complicated and I created sort of a second layer. I really don't care too much at the moment about you know the thickness of the fabric, about actually not even not even the folds themselves because I haven't quite decided yet how uh, I will I will go about the skirt in regards to rigging. At the moment I think that the sleeves will be straight so that they can be simulated but the skirt will be um, rigged with bones that's why I am planning to include the detail here but since lots of the work lots of the final detail will happen in polygon modeling anyways right now I'm just focusing on, on roughly you know getting the, the image sort of the, the, at the atmosphere that I want to achieve right and with that I'm calling it good enough for now. And this brings us pretty much to the end of this video. Again, it was sort of not enough content in my opinion for this video, but uh, that's the best that I could do for now. I, I will be spending a little bit more time on researching about the face and hopefully if all that goes well, next week we'll be having some very interesting contents. I might begin by retopologizing the hair first of all, but we'll also be looking at the face very soon. Now with that said, let's go back to the slides for a quick review. And once again, this concludes our video. In this part, we drafted the cloths in ZBrush, we sculpted the legs, and I gave you a quick update on the next steps that are to come. I hope you enjoyed this video as always, and if you did, please like, comment, and subscribe. You can also support me through Patreon as usual and you'll be able to find the link in the description. So thank you again for watching and I hope to see you again next time.